everybody video here for you today for new subs this is my 29th ancient history news video where i look at five ancient history news stories and put them into one video why don't we just get started right away here let's go down to no attack national preserve in alaska right down here now i'm starting to record this over coffee early in the morning barely awake i will get this edited and uploaded probably a little later today but this is the rugged wilderness where brown university did a study found it very interesting, kind of challenging the notion that humans first crossed the land bridge, the Bering Strait land bridge, about 15,000 years ago. Now, I will leave all these links below, but here is a look at the wilderness up here. Blue Lake and Red Tundra, No Attack National Preserve. It says biomarkers in ancient Alaska lake sediment could influence sinking about early Beringian migration. A group of Brown University researchers funded by Shared Beringian Heritage Program is tracking evidence that supports a new but disputed theory about when and how humans first arrived on the American continent. It says a group of researchers from Brown University believe they have found traces of human fecal matter and fire activity in northern Alaska dating back more than 30,000 years. Thousands of years before the archaeological record in indicates there were humans in Alaska. And that's just common with a lot of things. History just gets pushed back further in time. It says over the last few decades, a new theory has formed called the Beringian Standstill Hypothesis. According to this hypothesis, the Bering Land Bridge wasn't just a bridge, but part of a landscape that humans long inhabited. And there just wasn't a little land bridge right here. This was all one big continent indicated by the light blue here. The researchers retrieved samples from three Mars lakes formed in volcanic craters up to 200,000 years old. In northwestern Alaska, their goal is to see how far back they can find evidence of human feces and fire activity. And they found in the sediment here evidence that human activity went back at least 30,000 years. Pretty interesting. Let's move on. Next story I found very interesting. I talked about the underground cities in Turkey maybe about 7, 10 days ago. Well, this place I'd never heard about. Let's go down to Nushabad in Iran. Interesting story came up about a day ago. Here's a story from Heritage Daily, Nushabad, the hidden underground city, and this place appears to be very impressive, built a lot like Darren Kuyu and the underground cities in Turkey. It says Nushabed is an ancient subterranean city built beneath the small town of Nushabed in present-day Iran. The earliest parts of the city were constructed sometime during the Sasana period between AD 224 to 651, that is what they guess, and continued to be excavated during the post-Islamic period with evidence of occupation lasting until the Qajar dynasty. Researchers have identified three distinct levels reaching a depth of 16 meters, so that's what, about 50 feet down, a little over, and a complex network of interconnected tunnels and chambers covering an area of 3.7 acres. The different levels were connected through vertical and horizontal channels that also functioned as ventilation system allowing free air to flow throughout the substructure, so that seems a lot like Darren Kuyu to me. I just think this is very fascinating, a site I have never heard about before. The city was so well hidden, it says, that Nushabad was only rediscovered when a town resident stumbled across the tunnels while digging a sewage ditch on their property. Archaeologists suggest the city served as a concealed refuge against invaders with portals blocked using large millstones to prevent access, and that is exactly like Darren Kuyu. The tunnel network also rises and falls across multiple levels, leading to various dead ends, creating a complex labyrinth designed to confuse intruders. And that's all speculation, but I find this story very interesting. Let's go on. Next story, let's talk some ancient America and Florida down here. This is another area of the North American continent that was totally reshaped by the rising waters of the Younger Dryas period. The coast back 12,000 years ago extended maybe 60, 80 miles off the current coast. Pretty interesting to think about. Let's go down to Daytona Beach, though, just a little north of that. This is called Tomoka State Park. A story came out very recently on this place. Here's that stretch of land, the Halifax River down here. But with like a lot of sites in Florida that were near the waterways, ancient people lived here a long time ago. Let's just go over to a story. Here's a story from the Ormond Beach Observer that just came out recently. 5,000 years of buried history. Mounds at Tomoka State Park give insight into the Tomoka tribes. The Tomoka Mound and Minden Complex is now part of the National Register of Historic Places. 
It says, tucked away in a section of the park currently not accessible to the public, surrounded by historic oaks and sturdy red bay trees, the 12 mounds that make up the complex have given researchers a glimpse into what life was like for the Tamuqua people that once inhabited the area. Easily missed unless you know what you're looking for. The mounds are more than just hills hidden in the brush. It says, since the 1880s, the mysteries of these mounds has sparked interest. First came a man named A.E. Douglas, who arrived in Florida with interest of collecting Native American antiquities in 1882. After excavating three mounds, he ended up finding 10 banner stones buried with one of the largest mounds. Know now by its number, number six. After Douglas, John Griffin, Hale Smith, excavated Mound 2 in 1946, discovering evidence of human remains. From that point on, these mounds became associated with ceremonial burials. Then in 1979, two more men worked to identify more mounds within the park, and they found six more. These ancient mounds date back up to 5,000 years ago and are some of the largest and most intact of its kind in the state of Florida. As of November 27, 2020, they form part of the National Register of Historic Places. Let's move on. Next story, let's go down to ancient Turkey. Many periods of history in this area of the world. I've talked about many of them. But this place, this town, is called Sayagazi. A construction crew made a pretty cool find right down here. Here's a story that came out on March 1st. Construction workers discover ancient sarcophagus in northwest Turkey. I haven't talked about a lot of sarcophagus being found in this area of the world. But that is a look at one found, not by archaeologists, but by a construction crew. There's a look at the marble sarcophagus with something etched in it right there. Design. You can leave your thoughts. What you think that might represent appears a couple of vines coming out of it with grapes or is that a pine cone on the end of that? I just can't really tell. But that had to be important symbolism for it to be on a sarcophagus. It says municipal workers unexpectedly found an ancient sarcophagus during excavations in the Siakazi district of northwestern Turkey's Ekasir province, report said Monday. But that is an interesting find, that is for sure. Here is a better look at this, and is this even a sarcophagus? But there is a vessel with the vines and it appears grapes coming out of it. But it says the marble sarcophagus, which is 1.5 meters or 4.9 feet tall and 33 centimeters or 12.9 inches wide, was found as the workers were excavating for a construction project. So I guess there are some questions on this find still. It says the district command immediately intervened and retrieved the sarcophagus as it was deemed a historical artifact before being handed over to the Eski Sehar Museum officials for further analysis. It says Eski Sehar has been a rich home to several archaeological discoveries and sarcophagi over the years. It says a 5,000-year-old paint palette believed to be used for painting dishes in a settlement mound was found last year. They also found a 5,000-year-old sarcophagus, a 3,000-year-old sarcophagus, but many finds seem to be made in this area. I will leave the link below. Let's move on. Fifth and final story. Let's go down to ancient America. I'm covering that a lot in this video just because I cover it a lot on my channel. But I want to thank a few people for sending me this story. I just didn't include it in the video. Egypt to announce huge archaeological discovery in Luxor this March. Zahi Awas. So I'm sure we will be keeping our eyes glued. See what they come up with there. But let's go down to Vermont today story that goes back to the Younger Dryas period. This is Mount Holly, Vermont, right down here. Here's a story that just came out a few hours ago. First humans in New England may have shared the landscape with woolly mammoths. This research was done by Dartmouth University. Researchers trace the age of a rib fragment of the Mount Holly mammoth. Woolly mammoths may have walked the landscape at the same time as the earliest humans in what is now New England, according to Dartmouth. Study published in Boreas through the radiocarbon dating of a rib fragment from the Mount Holly Mammoth from Mount Holly, Vermont, the researchers learned that this mammoth existed approximately 12,800 years ago. And that 12,800 years ago is a date that we are all pretty familiar with who study the Younger Dryas. This date may overlap with the arrival of the first humans in the Northeast who are thought to have arrived around the same time. New research has shown that humans arrived in the United States long before 12,800 years ago, and I've made a few videos on places like that. 
It says, it has long been thought that megafauna and humans in New England did not overlap in time and space, and that it was probably ultimately environmental change that led to the extinction of these animals in the region, but our research provides some of the first evidence that they may have actually coexisted. I made a few different ancient history videos on Vermont, one showing some ancient stonework, one showing a mound site, and then this one, the Mount Holly Mammoth, was mentioned in this video. Vermont's 11, 12,000-year-old site, Ludlow Mountain. It says the Mount Holly Mammoth, Vermont's state terrestrial fossil, was discovered in the summer of 1848 in the Green Mountains during the construction of the Burlington and Rutland Railroad Lines, one molar. Two tusks and an unknown number of bones were excavated from a hilltop bog near Mount Holly. Over time, the specimens became scattered across several repositories as they transferred from one collection to the next. A rib fragment from the Mount Holly Mammoth became part of the Hood Museum of Arts collection. Of some of the other skeletal materials are now housed at the Museum of Comparative Zoology at Harvard University and the Mount Holly Historical Museum. It says that Nathaniel Kitchell stumbled across a Mount Holly Mammoth rib fragment last December at the Hood Museum's off-site storage facility as curators had invited him to take a look at some of their artifacts from New Hampshire and Vermont. He came across a large bone that was stained brown in color of age. He had a hunch that this was the remains of a mammoth and he looked down at the tag and it said rib fossil of elephant Mount Holly railroad cut. It says they took a 3D scan of the material prior to taking a small 1 gram sample from the broken end of the rib bone. The sample was then sent out to the Center for Applied Isotope Studies at the University of Georgia for radiocarbon dating and a stable isotopic analysis. It says the Mount Holly Mammoth was one of the last known occurring mammoths in the Northeast. While our findings show that there was a temporal overlap between mammoths and humans, this doesn't necessarily mean that people saw these animals or had anything to do with their death, but it raises a possibility that now maybe they did. And we'll talk about that here at the end here. It says the radiocarbon date from the Mount Holly Mammoth of 12,800 years old overlaps with the accepted age of when humans may have initially settled in the region, which is thought to have occurred during the start of the Younger Dryas period. But the story that the Clovis were the first people here and they arrived 13,000 years ago has been pretty much totally overthrown. I've reported on many sites that go back farther than 13,000 years ago in the eastern part of the United States. Here's a story I reported on last fall. The Clovis only lasted for 300 years, and by 12,750 years ago they were gone. And the dating of that woolly mammoth, which I say is one of the last ones remaining in the northeast, is 12,800 years ago, matches with that pretty much precisely. I'd say the Clovis and the woolly mammoths were taken out by the same event, but that's just my opinion. That is the report on the Mount Holly Mammoth and four other ancient history news stories. There is the Jackson Gore site, that video I showed you, and that report. But I hope you thought that was interesting. Ancient America was featured quite a bit in that video, but that's okay with me. Hope you thought that was cool, and you all have a very nice day.